Right now, Governor Evers is suing state Republicans for unlawfully withholding pay raises of UW employees, how this is affecting the real people who work there. Also, a slew of constitutional amendments approved by the state Senate today, one changing the way Wisconsinites can cast their ballots. Late to school again, but not as late as before. Tonight, how Madison parents are responding to new start times and bus woes during their kids' commutes. You're watching News Three Now at 5. Well, before we get to all of those stories, let's get a look at your first warm forecast. Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti is on the weather patio. Gary? The last couple days have been nice, but now we have uh, some showers moving in uh, probably later on tonight. As we take a look at visible cloud track, we've had some sunshine during the day, but thin clouds started to move in this afternoon, and now the thicker clouds are arriving from the west. But the rain is still quite a distance off to the west. You can see some showers uh, to the north and also to the west across parts of Minnesota. A little bit of snow up toward northern Minnesota. But as we take a look at six-hour future track radar, you can see as we get closer toward midnight, we'll see some showers start to approach the Mississippi River, and everybody should see some showers later on tonight. Low temperatures this morning because of the clear skies, 36 in Madison. A few places were in the 40s. Most areas were in the low to mid 30s. Current temperatures are now in the 40s to around 50. Janesville right now still at 50 degrees, but just about everybody else seeing temperatures in the 40s. Here in Dane County, 42 right now in Cross Plains, 48 in Sun Prairie, and 49 degrees right now in Deerfield. Look for skies to be mostly cloudy this evening. Should be dry. Temperatures will drop into the lower 40s, then kind of hold steady late uh, this evening into the overnight hours. Later on, I'll take a look at how much rain we can expect and a warm-up as we head into next week. Gary, thank you. Today, Republicans in the state Senate proposed tweaks to an existing plan to help fund repairs to the Brewers Stadium. That proposal scales back to the state, scales back the state's contribution by $35 million and imposes a surcharge on tickets to non-baseball events. A floor vote in the Senate could happen as early as next week. The Brewers are on record saying their stadium at American Family Field needs some extensive work done. Team officials have hinted the Brewers might leave Milwaukee if they don't see public funds or repairs soon. In exchange for those public funds, the team said it would extend its lease at the stadium through 2050, in addition to contributing $100 million to help out. Also at the Capitol today, an amendment to the state constitution that would prohibit government agencies from ordering churches to shut down during a state of emergency. That was just approved now. It goes to the voters. The amendment comes in reaction to a stay-at-home order that Governor Evers issued back in 2020 to slow the spread of COVID. The then conservative-leaning state Supreme Court struck down the governor's order, but Republicans introduced the constitutional amendment so that similar orders could not be issued in the future. Governor Evers vetoed a similar bill from Republicans in 2021, but the governor does not have the power to veto a proposed constitutional amendment. And that's among a slate of constitutional amendments that passed the state Senate earlier today. Included in those amendments, significant changes to how Wisconsin runs elections. Political reporter Will Keneally has more on what that means. Will? So in Wisconsin here, we don't have uh, really ballot measures like they do in California, for example. So these constitutional amendments are the only way for you, the voter, to weigh in on state law. And these amendments would require photo IDs for voting, for example, and also prevent cities from taking grant money from outside groups to help run elections. Now, these funds help cities run their elections during the 2020 pandemic. But Republicans say that it erodes confidence. We all know that this amendment isn't about looking forward and making investments in our future elections. As we just heard, it's about looking back to 2020. We're entering a paradigm of private entities battling, private entities battling city governments versus city governments for control of the state. This double dark money needs to stop. Thank you. Now, Republicans argue that these funds going to larger cities can help turn out voter, voters for Democrats. Now, this could end up on voters' ballots as early as next April. And why go this constitutional amendment route? It circumvents the Democratic governor's veto. So this is just a negotiation between the state legislature and the voters themselves. And we could see a higher GOP turnout next April when it coincides with the Republican presidential primary. Reporting from the Capitol, Will Keneally, News 3 Now. Will, thank you. UW-Madison unveiled some new artwork today on Bascom Hill to honor the Ho-Chunk Nation. The piece was created by two UW W professors and a Ho-Chunk student titled Seed by Seed. The collection of banners includes traditional images and colors of the tribe. UW-Madison occupies ancestral Ho-Chunk land. The president of the Ho-Chunk Nation says he hopes the banners will honor the land for Indigenous Peoples Heritage Month. 
you see here behind you is, is more than just a, a mural, more than just banners. It speaks volumes to our history, our clan system, our culture. The banners were commissioned as part of UW's Our Shared Future initiative, created to honor and respect the First Nations in Wisconsin. The artists received blankets at the ceremony as a thank you for their work on the banners, which will hang through the end of the month. Parents in Madison were hopeful that new changes to school start and dismissal times would help resolve some of the year-long headaches with the district's school buses. But tonight we're hearing from parents that the new schedule still brought in issues getting kids to school on time. Our Katherine Merck spoke with the superintendent about how the new bus system has been looking after its first day. Katherine? Months into the school year, the district made the decision to change some of the start and end times at various schools across the city to try to help the bus issues. But some students are still showing up late to class and the bus is to blame. Today I sat down with the district superintendent to get answers about the problems that are still happening. She told me staffing shortages continue to be part of the problem, but she she says that issues this new system has created are still better than the problems the old process had for pickup. We had to move to um, some start time changes, which are not ideal. We know that that creates problems. Um, but we know that sort of the hiccups we're experiencing right now will lead to long term stability. Lots of parents have been messaging us about their own bus issues with the system, students arriving late to school and other problems. One parent told me today that her son was picked up 20 minutes late, which made him come to his math class 10 minutes late after that. You'll hear from that parent and more from the superintendent tonight at 6 on News 3 Now. Catherine, thank you. Commuters beware at the beginning of next week, crews will start construction on the Monona Terrace Tunnel, which means that stretch of John Dolan Drive will be reduced to one lane in each direction starting on Monday morning. Drivers should expect significant delays during peak travel times and should find some alternate routes. After repairing some concrete and the tunnel storm drains, John Nolan is scheduled to fully reopen on Thursday, November 9th. Winter is quickly approaching, forcing homeless shelters in our communities to seek shelter anywhere they can. One such shelter in Janesville says now is the time when your help can go the longest way. Kyle Pazorski shares why. Kyle? November is Wisconsin's Homeless Awareness Month, a time to bring awareness to the public about the needs of thousands of people across the state as temperatures start to drop. According to data from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, close to 5,000 people are homeless in Wisconsin on any given day. Today, I spoke with a man who is staying at the Gifts Men's Shelter in Janesville who says being homeless can happen to anyone. It could happen real quickly to anybody. It's, it's, everyone has talents and everyone is useful and everyone is a human being. Gift serves homeless in all of Rock County and they are close to full occupancy and it's not even winter yet. What this means is that they will need to continue to have more supplies to keep providing help to the people staying there like Gerard. And that's where you can help out by volunteering and donating food and general hygiene items. They say as we get closer to the time of giving, your help can really make a positive difference in their lives. You can do so at any shelter. And of course, information to help those at gifts can be found at giftshelter.org. Right, Kyle, thank you. Coming up, it's election day in several states, setting the stage for the 2024 presidential election. And the Supreme Court case that could grant states the right to take away guns from domestic abusers. That and more coming up on News 3 Now at 5. And on Wall Street, another day of gains for the markets in Tuesday trading. The Dow up 57 points, the Nasdaq jumps 121, the S&P 500 adds a dozen. We'll be right back. Stoughton Health has three convenient urgent care locations for the care you need without the wait. We have clinics in Oregon, Stoughton, and McFarland with extended hours to fit your schedule. Stoughton Health, creating excellence together. Get the best deals of the season on a new Tempur-Pedic from Steinhoffels. Tempur-Pedic mattresses relieve pressure points and support the body as no other mattress can. And right now, you can save up to $500 on adjustable base sets, plus get $300 in Steinhoffels cash. Queen sets start at just $42 per month when you use 72-month financing. Hurry in, this deal won't last long. Shop in-store or online at steinhoffels.com. Think all Medicare plans are the same? 
Think again. With Dean Health Plan, you can get the coverage you need with premiums as low as $0 a month. That includes medical, hospital, and prescription coverage with $0 copays for primary care doctor visits, plus extra benefits like comprehensive dental and savings on over-the-counter pharmacy items. Call 1-855-822-6173 now to request your free Dean Health Plan guide. Dean Health Plan, right here with you. Don't miss the 34th Annual Winter Art Fair Off the Square, November 11th and 12th at the Monona Terrace Convention Center. Featuring over 100 Wisconsin exhibitors with a wonderful selection of ceramics, paintings, glass art, wood, jewelry, and much more. Place your bids at our silent auction Saturday only. Children will enjoy the Young Collector's Corner. Buy local for the holidays. The Winter Art Fair Off the Square. Put it on your calendar today. Get 11% off everything now at Menards. Design your door your way with Mastercraft's easy step-by-step -step designer. Or visit our stores and choose from our great selection of in-stock doors today. Get this six-panel ready-to-paint interior door for just $99.99 after rebate. Designer's Image Vinyl Tiles are perfect for updating your home. They feature self-adhesive backing for a fast installation. Silver Series Vinyl Tiles are only 89 cents each after 11% rebate. Save big money at Menards. Stoughton Health has three convenient urgent care locations for the care you need without the wait. We have clinics in Oregon, Stoughton, and McFarland with extended hours to fit your schedule. Stoughton Health, creating excellence together. The busing problems don't stop for Madison schools. Katherine Merck looks at how parents are managing the changes the schools have made to their family schedule. Plus, how you can help the homeless population during this critical time of the year. That's tonight at 6. Everything costs more, and families are struggling. UW Athletics and the Goodman Community Center need your help to provide 4,000 families with Thanksgiving meals. Please consider a food or monetary gift so no one goes without a holiday dinner. You're watching News 3 Now at 5. Americans in several states are hitting the polls today, setting the stage for the presidential election next year, and that's now less than a year away. And among the key races to watch, abortion access in Ohio, governorships in Kentucky and Mississippi, control of the Virginia General Assembly, and the mayoral race in Philadelphia. Today's results could be indicators on where the public stands on key issues leading into the 2024 presidential election. The Supreme Court heard arguments today in a high-stakes case that pits gun rights against a federal law that seeks to protect victims of domestic violence. Natalie Brand has the latest from Washington. What do we want? Outside the U.S. Supreme Court, a call to keep guns out of the hands of domestic abusers. What is at stake in this case? A million gazillion lives of men, women, and children. Amanda King told us she nearly lost her life to an abusive husband. I was in shock. I couldn't believe that he just shot me in the back of the head. She's among the women who shared their stories while arguments unfolded inside the U.S. Supreme Court. Guns and domestic abuse are a deadly combination. As this court has said, all too often, the only difference between a battered woman and a dead woman is the presence of a gun. Lawyers for 23-year-old Zaki Rahimi are challenging the constitutionality of the 1994 law that led to his indictment for possessing a firearm while having a restraining order against him. He was arrested after shooting his gun in public five different times. You don't have any doubt that your client's a dangerous person, do you? Your Honor, I would want to know what dangerous person means. At well, the it moment. means someone who's shooting, uh, uh, you know, at people. Uh, that's a good start. The Biden administration argues that last year's Supreme Court decision in the U.S. versus Bruin case has muddied the waters. That ruling said history and tradition should determine whether laws regulating firearms are constitutional. Once the court corrects the misinterpretation of Bruin, then I think the constitutional principle is clear. You can disarm dangerous persons. Legal analysts say a majority of justices appears poised to uphold the law to protect victims of domestic violence. Natalie Brand, CBS News, the Supreme Court. 
New at 5, Capitol Police arrested an armed individual near the nation's capital today. Police say the person appeared to have a long gun and was in the upper Senate park from across from Union Station. Officers reported the suspect is in custody and police are searching the person's belongings. A law enforcement source says the person was tased during the arrest. Capitol Police say they have no reason to believe there is an ongoing threat. It's been exactly one month since the deadly October 7th Hamas terror attacks killed 1,400 people, plunging that region into a slow-moving war. The Israel Defense Forces just shared this video with the media of ground operations and airstrikes in Gaza. Approximately three dozen Israeli children are believed to be among the more than 200 hostages that Hamas is holding. The Hamas-run health ministry in Gaza says the Palestinian death toll has surpassed 10,000. Of those, more than 4,000, they say, were children. Heightened tensions abroad are being felt on campuses across the U.S. As the war continues, the U.S. Department of Education is reminding schools and colleges they have a legal obligation to address incidents of discrimination. We want to promote free speech, and to be very frank with you, college campuses is where students should be able to express different opinions. Uh, but when it comes to anti-Semitism or Islamophobia, that has no place on our college campuses or in our schools. Last week, Governor Evers sued the legislature, arguing that it's blocking basic government functions, including signing off on pay raises for UW-Madison employees. Our Jalen Banks joins us from downtown Madison now with what some UW employees and System President Jay Rothman are saying about this issue. Jalen? UW serves as the largest employer in the state, meaning this battle for wages impacts more than 35,000 people. And I was able to catch up with people this afternoon who are impacted by this issue. Withholding uh, compensation that's been approved is simply unfair and it's wrong. That's how UW President Jay Rothman is feeling after the state legislator chose to block raises for UW employees. These are employees who are uh, food service workers, their custodians, their administrative assistants, you know, people serving throughout the university. And one UW employee feels this will only drive people out of not only Madison, but the state of Wisconsin altogether. Like the cost of living this last year, it's like everybody I knew almost moved because their rent was going up by several hundred dollars per month, mine included. And it's, I can't imagine trying to eke it out in Madison if you're not making a livable wage. And especially that livable wage is not being allowed through because of political processes. It's something they think can make a long-time problem in the state even worse. It's been talked about for decades, even since I was in high school, about the brain drain of people leaving Wisconsin to go elsewhere. And it's something he feels sends a strong message to both faculty and students. You're telling students we don't want you here, and you're telling faculty and staff we don't think your time is worth it. At a news conference this afternoon, Speaker Robin Voss uh, he said part of the reason why he withheld the races was because, quote, the legislator is not going to stand behind the idea that we have a system that focuses on division, indoctrination, and exclusion at the expense of the rest of the state. And that's in reference to Republicans wanting UW to cut diversity, equity, and inclusion programs before releasing the money for the races. Reporting in Madison, Jalen Banks, News 3 Now. Jalen, thank you. A look now at your first warrant forecast. There's Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti. Gary? We had some sunshine earlier today. The clouds have moved in, but as you take a look at high-resolution radar, really not much in the way of precipitation. There have been some sprinkles and some flurries up through central Wisconsin. But a little wider radar perspective shows most of that precipitation is heading to the northeast. This is actually warmer air that's starting to move in from the south and west. But as we take a look at six-hour future track radar, Watch how showers start to develop out to the west across Minnesota and Iowa and then head toward the Mississippi River. So most of the showers across our viewing area will be after midnight as that wave kind of moves on through. And we'll see off and on showers through the day tomorrow. Might even see an isolated thunderstorm late tonight. But the rain isn't going to amount to very much. Most areas probably looking at about a quarter to a half inch of rain over southern Wisconsin. Maybe some amounts over a half inch, especially into the east central portions of the state. But most of southern Wisconsin probably in that quarter to half inch range. And it's not going to rain continuously either. So off and on showers. Three things you need to know. Those showers overnight into uh, the day tomorrow, probably winding down tomorrow evening. Then dry weather comes in Thursday and probably lasts through at least next Thursday. So we've got a prolonged period of dry weather and it'll turn mild for most of next week. We'll see a windy day on Thursday, be a little cooler Friday and Saturday, but then temperatures will be above normal as we head into the uh, first part of next week and beyond. In fact, take a look at the normal high temperature. It goes from 49 down to 44 over the next 10 days. 
days. He'll be a little bit below normal as we head into Friday and Saturday, but notice already by Sunday we're back up into the lower 50s, and then those temperatures in the middle 50s for much of next week, again, when the average high temperature is about 10 degrees cooler. And even further out into the future, the 8 to 14 day temperature outlook from the Climate Prediction Center shows above normal temperatures for much of the eastern three quarters of the country with the highest probabilities right where we are. Only the western part of the country expected to see below normal temperatures. Above normal precipitation expected across much of the country with the highest probabilities over California. A lot of this will depend on whether or not we get some showers toward next weekend, but much of next week will be dry. On weather track, you can see those showers coming in. Notice the orientation of the jet stream from southwest to northeast. That's going to start bringing in the mild Pacific air, but notice most of the precipitation too up to the north. So at this point, we're not looking at a lot of precipitation, but it'll arrive later on tonight. In fact, planning your night uh, starting at 9 p.m. Cloudy skies, temperatures staying in the low to mid 40s thanks to the cloud cover. We get toward midnight and here come the showers starting to develop west of Madison. Temperatures again lower 40s, but as we head through the night, those temperatures actually start to rise. And again, there could even be an isolated thunderstorm as that first batch of showers moves through. And then we'll see showers into tomorrow with temperatures in the middle 40s. Planning your night across Dane County, low 46, Oregon, 45 to Forest and 46 in Marshall across the rest of southern Wisconsin, a little cooler to the north, 41 in Watoma and Camp Douglas, but up to 48 in Janesville tomorrow. Mostly cloudy, some scattered showers, high temperature topping out at 52 degrees. And again, the rainfall amounts, probably a quarter to a half inch of rain, heavier amounts north and east of Madison, lighter amounts toward the southwestern portion of the state. First one, 7 to 10 day forecast. Temperatures a little cooler for Friday and Saturday. Thursday will be kind of windy as well, but then those temperatures get right back into the 50s and notice that period of dry weather from Veterans Day all the way through Thursday, maybe Friday morning of next week before the next chance of showers arrives by Friday afternoon. As we check out first warrant traffic right now, here's the view of uh, the roads across Madison. Some slowdowns on the eastbound Beltline, especially from Monona Drive back toward uh, Park Street. Right now on the eastbound Beltline, it'll take you 25 minutes from University Avenue to the interstate, only 15 minutes back in the westbound direction and 18 minutes inbound from Sun Prairie to downtown. Same trip or same time outbound from downtown to Sun Prairie. US 12 Midland to Sauk City is 16 minutes today and uh, I-3990 from the Beltline to Janesville will take you 23 minutes. That's your news for now. First one traffic. All right. Thank you, Gary. Are you working multiple jobs? Stick around. You're not alone. Up next, a new report reveals who exactly is working more on News 3 Now at 5. News 3 Now First Warm Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Win a hand paint jackpot at Home Chunk Gaming Wisconsin Dallas, and you'll have a chance to win a new Mercedes and a shot at $100,000 in cash. It's the Mega Jackpot Winners Quarterly Draws going on now at Home Chunk Gaming Wisconsin Dallas. Quartz takes a different approach to health insurance. We know every life well lived is a journey, and we're here to light the way at every step. That's why for 40 years, we've been alongside the doctors and hospitals who know what their communities need. Because they're a part of them. Because we're a part of them. There's a fire burning in all of us. Let's ignite it together. Quartz, find your spark. At Lawton Cates, we're all about comebacks. Whether it's helping you recover after an accident or return to the job following an injury, we fight the odds and the insurance company for our clients every day. Your life counts. Lawton Cates. Trust your feet to Morgan's Shoes. Loa Footwear, a name synonymous with premium outdoor footwear for 80 plus years. Our patented mono wrap construction wraps the foot in a lightweight yet firmly supportive frame. We use a softer polyurethane in our midsoles that provides better shock absorption and ultimate comfort underfoot. Plus, our patented Gore-Tex liner is more durable and creates a smoother fit, thus less potential for blisters or discomfort. Comfort with style. Trust your feet to Morgan Shoes. Morgan Shoes, Hildale. The next generation of streaming is here. Introducing Spectrum One Stream with internet, advanced Wi-Fi, mobile, and now TV. With the all-new Zumo Stream Box, it's streaming simplified. Get Spectrum One Stream with fast and reliable internet for $49.99 a month, free advanced Wi-Fi, a free unlimited mobile line, and a free Zumo Stream Box when you add Spectrum TV. Go to spectrum.com slash stream, a Spectrum store, or call 833-976-4999. Memories matter. 
I think the biggest thing I got out of my service in Vietnam was a real sense of patriotism. I'm very proud of what I did. I fought for you, and I'd fight for you again. This Veterans Day, we remember, and we never forget those who sacrificed everything for our freedoms. We are Crest Funeral and Cremation Service, and we know that your memories matter. Surgenian's Landfill Free Guarantee has kept more than 20 million pounds of commercial and residential carpet and pad from area landfills. Visit Madison's largest showroom of flooring options, including eco-friendly products. Local, sustainable, Surgenian's. The moms have a brand new show. Are you having a great time? I'm Mom So Hard Ladies Night, Saturday, November 18th at Ho-Chunk Gaming, Wisconsin Dells. Tickets are on sale now through Ticketmaster. Ho-Chunk Gaming, Wisconsin Dells. You're watching News 3 Now at 5. A growing number of Americans are working multiple jobs. That's according to the October jobs report from the Labor Department. Patrick Cornell explains what experts say is behind the federal data and who is leading that trend. Juggling multiple gigs. The latest jobs report from the Labor Department shows nearly 8.4 million people had multiple jobs in October. That's the highest number since the start of the pandemic. And women appear to be leading that trend. The federal data shows nearly 6% of women worked multiple jobs in October. That's compared to 4.7% of men. Our cost of living has almost tripled since 2020. Experts say people may be taking on additional jobs to offset high inflation, which has been easing but is still painfully high for some households. Nonprofits like the United Way say inflation is outpacing wage growth, and that's making it harder for them to help families. Wages do not reflect how important they are to everyday living. Remote work is also offering more flexibility and opportunities for workers to manage several jobs from home. And there's also fear that layoffs could have people looking for supplemental jobs, but one economy Economist says layoffs are actually historically low right now. Companies are reluctant to, to lose their workers and they're willing to negotiate even higher salaries to keep them. U.S. employers added only 150,000 jobs last month. That's the smallest gain since June, signaling the economy is slowing and signaling that the Federal Reserve's action to tame inflation may be working. The question is, how quickly is it working? We're still far from the 2% target, um, but it's inflation has come down quite a bit. For Consumer Watch, I'm Patrick Cornell reporting. We'll get a final check on your first warned forecast when we come back. Stoughton Health has three convenient urgent care locations for the care you need without the wait. We have clinics in Oregon, Stoughton, and McFarland with extended hours to fit your schedule. Stoughton Health, creating excellence together. Your wedding day. Your love. Your style. Your celebration. Your wedding place. Discover the Madison Club, the city's premier wedding venue, featuring multiple unique spaces, stunning lake views, and award-winning cuisine. Spring wedding specials now available. Stop whitening your smile the old-fashioned way with strips and trays that can take 30 minutes to an hour. I'm Jonathan Greenhut, the CEO of Paraswabs. When I met Dr. Ginnaker and he introduced me to Paraswabs and I saw how effective they were and how easy they were to use, I knew we had to share it with the world. Paraswabs was clinically studied to whiten natural teeth as well as stained caps, crowns, and veneers. It's so effective, it works on stains caused by coffee, tea, red wine, and and even smoking. For those of you who have that one stained tooth that's darker than the rest, Power Swabs can target that area using swab precision. My favorite thing about the Power Swabs is that I was actually able to take the swab and really get through some of those areas that are kind of like untreated. I felt like I, I can immediately see the results and I'm like, oh, I'm definitely starting to see the shades getting brighter and brighter or whiter and whiter. If you have yellowing between your teeth, if you have coffee or tea stains near your gum line, just 
just snap, swab, and smile. And in each five minute application, you'll see whiter teeth. So stop whitening your smile the old fashioned way with strips and trays and start using the Power Swabs five minute solution. Well, they're whiter, they're brighter, and I feel better about my smile. And it was so easy to do. One friend was like, did you, your teeth look like really white. Did you, did you do anything to it? And I was like, I did, <laughs> I did power swabs. Call for your five minute solution to whiter teeth. This Thanksgiving, order power swabs and receive up to 50% off the retail price. And as an added bonus, get a free power swabs quick stick pen with your order. The quick stick pen is your on the go solution to help prevent stains from adhering to your teeth after drinking coffee, tea, or even after smoking. And in addition to saving up to 50% off and your free quick stick pen, get free shipping by ordering now. Dial the number on your screen or visit power swabs com today. Stoughton Health has three convenient urgent care locations for the care you need without the wait. We have clinics in Oregon, Stoughton, and McFarland with extended hours to fit your schedule. Stoughton Health, creating excellence together. Coming up on the CBS Evening News, a man carrying an assault-style rifle was arrested on Capitol Hill near the Senate office building. The shocking details we're learning about the suspect. That and more headlines tonight right here on the CBS Evening News. And coming up in the next half hour, the busing issues for the Madison Metropolitan School District and first and for, and students continue hear from parents and how they've had to adapt their schedules with the ongoing problems. Peruse a national park for free this Saturday. The National Park Service is waiving all entrance fees for Veterans Day. You'll still have to pay for services, though, like camping, boat launches, and special tours. There are more than 400 national park sites across the country. This will be the last chance for free admission this year. And Gary's back. One final check of the forecast. Yeah, we're watching some rain showers out to the west of us that'll be here sometime uh, later on tonight. Actually, on the far western horizon, a little peak of sunshine from the WISC TV Sky Cam. Of course, you know, now uh, we're past sunset. There's the Platteville Queen Bee Radio Sky Cam. A little clearing out there, but high resolution radar with those clouds overhead, not seeing any rain here. However, six hour future track radar does show some showers sneaking into southwestern Wisconsin after about 10 or 11 o'clock tonight. Most of us will see showers after midnight. Temperatures right now mainly in the middle 40s. Uh, right now, 46 in Madison. These temperatures only drop to the lower 40s before they start rising overnight. And we're back in 30 minutes for news. Three now at six, the CBS Evening News is next.